In this part of the photography review show, we're going to be looking at wildlife, still life, sport, travel, and pet photographers. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of our photography review show. For those who don't know me, my name is Jacob Bors. I'm a professional photographer based in West Sussex here in the south of England. And for the last two or three years, I've been reviewing photos of my colleagues and friends. And that's why we decided here at The Clever Photographer that that's what we're gonna do for our photography community. It's been super successful. So over the last several weeks, we actually received many, many photos from many, many photographers and we're doing super well. And this is the reason why we now have to divide the show between the three different parts, focusing on different styles of photography. Also, what we have to do quite often is to take the pictures you send us and choose two or three of the best ones and review them because the time doesn't allow us to review all of the photos. But either way, it's a lot of fun and we really enjoy doing it. Now, before we're gonna jump into the reviews, we have few things to go through. First of all, there is still standing the overall rating we share at the end of each of the photographer. We're giving a stars from one star to five stars. And one star basically means going back to the basics, starting from the beginning. And then five star means you are ready to be shared, sold and hired. And uh, the pictures are that good. So uh, that adding lots of new fun to the actual photography review. Also, we have to thank again, Clever Photographer for putting us on. All the tools are there. Make sure you head to their website, cleverphotographer.com and check out uh, some of the tools I created there, like uh, Photoshop brushes, Lightroom brushes, skies, presets, and lots of other things. Finally, as always, we want to ask you to make sure that you like, subscribe and comment under this video so we can continue doing this show. And to finish it off, again, there is a set of news and uh, basically it's something really exciting, something what we were planning to do for quite a few weeks now and we're going to start from this week. So in order to put everything together and in one place, uh, instead of sharing at the Facebook and YouTube, we decided that we're going to create a Facebook group. The Facebook group is called Clever Photographer Academy and that's basically going to bring all of this together and hopefully allow us to spend more time with the community of photographers who are willing to learn more and improve their photography. So starting from today, you can head to Facebook, uh, look for Clever Photographer Academic Group, uh, make sure you hit there a button to join, you will fill up a little questionnaire and then you will be allowed in. And the whole idea of this group is to share your photos and receive a feedback on them even throughout the week rather than just on these Mondays. Also, another thing is to bring a picture you are not sure what to do with, you're not sure about how to edit it or what went wrong, and we will try to help you there on this. And of course, ask questions. So it's gonna be a lot of fun and it's definitely something uh, what you should do. So again, head to the Facebook, look for Clever Photographer Academy and join us there because we're just starting and usually these things are even more fun when you start on the beginning and when you really set yourself in. And that brings us nicely together with the page we have at Clever Photographer. The address is cleverphotographer.com slash review. And that will be the hub of all the review shows. You will see the plan there, the program. Uh, usually for four or five weeks ahead, you will be able to send us pictures for any of the five weeks. You will be able to see what we're doing and find out more information there. So usually the journey will start from the cleverphotographer.com slash review. That's where you will be able to find the Facebook group. That's where you will be able to find the dates. And that's where you will be able to find the places where you can share your photos and receive even more feedback. So lots of excitement stuff heading our way. We are super excited to bring this again a little bit further and have even more fun with you guys. But now without any further ado, let's jump straight into it and start with the actual reviews. And here we are with the third and final part of this week photography review show. Uh, this week uh, we're gonna in this third part look at again the rest of the different photography styles we have received over the week and what are we gonna have in front of us? Pets, sports, still life and wildlife photographers. So lots of fun, let's jump straight into it and again we are here in a Lightroom where we have the pictures ready and the first person we're gonna be looking at is Sabine. So Sabine sent us her pictures of her dogs uh, folding nicely in the pets photography. Sabine actually sent us many pictures before and she's a great pets photographer and we in overall really love her photos. So this week we again back to uh, the pets photography and we have uh, two captures of the dogs 
and let's talk about first impression uh sabine first impression uh, what i really like on both of them and across your dog and pets photography is that uh, you have this really easily recognizable style so when i flip between them you would be able from both of them to be able to say that it's you who create them capture them and edit them so that's really nice that's something what i really like mm. i think uh, one thing which is kind of uh nice for me also is the overall feel of the photos the autumn is here i think it really nicely works together and it's well done i think i would do the cropping just a little bit differently but that's something what we can look in post-processing and overall i really like the pictures and they very well done so talking about technical point of view i uh across your pictures i really like your work with the depth of the field i really like the fact that the whole uh, part front part of the dog is nice and focused and sharp together with the kind of foreground where he's standing i think that works really nice um, similarly here i really like how the foreground is blurry the background is blurry and then the focus is on the dog uh, the running dog i think works really well so technically both of them nice and sharp um, nice overcast day you know you don't have to photograph everything during a sunset but uh, you have to really think with your kind of brain on uh, so when you head out and it's overcast it creates really nice diffused light it takes away the shadows uh, as long as there is some kind of uh, texture in the sky it can work really nicely and for this kind of autumn moody feel photos it works very well so the time of the day the light of the day is fine that exposure is well as well moving on the artistic feel out of the two of them uh, I like this one a little bit more and i think it's because the dog is kind of walking straight towards us it's almost like from some kind of advert if we would have cropped it a little bit differently and for me it would be something like this let's just unlock this and move this maybe like this here uh, i think it's a little bit stronger composition because obviously anytime something faces us uh the it generally comes more pleasant the composition when it's centered and i think in this case it works quite well it wouldn't have to be so tight we could still go maybe something like this and let's see if i will be one second if i will be able to crop it maybe at least like this it could be something like this and i think it's a little bit nicer on this one it's funny because uh if i wouldn't see this one before uh, it's like you have a two very similar painting and one of them composition wise is a little bit stronger which is this one uh then this one immediately you kind of put it a little bit aside but there's nothing wrong with the thing i think the running uh, dog is quite nice you can see it from a side so it makes sense that he's kind of coming from a side but uh what would be even maybe nicer would be if he would be more on the side so since he's coming from the side and kind of entering the center of the composition it would be nicer if you would be positioned when you were capturing it a little bit more on the side i think that would be really lovely but in overall nothing wrong with neither one of us neither one of them i think maybe the square crop is something what doesn't work on this one as well and if we would go for something like a panoramatic shot so I'm thinking almost something like this. It creates a whole new picture and it, it really works for me as well. So for this one, I really like when it's panoramatic. For this one, I like when it's a little bit tighter. Both of them works really well and uh, artistically they are well done with nice feel. Now when I uh, cropped it, I really like it like this. Moving on to post-processing. So post-processing is done really well. The moody feel is there. Um, uh, there's textures. Uh, we could just bring a little bit the exposure and maybe work a little bit more with the kind of um, dodge and burn just to get more contrast and interest. You know, the kind of usual. Um, and similarly from the other side to see we bring down the exposure and play around with it something like this but uh, otherwise nothing um two of them really great i have nothing to add and because i have nothing to add i will give you four stars this week sabin i think they are both great captures well executed and well done um i think out of everything i've seen from you i've seen not nicer pictures but pictures i preferred and they would be fives but those two definitely four four stars this must be in a good week because i give um 
three four star in one episode where i didn't give any last week but uh, great execution really love it sabine as always well done uh, come and join us at the facebook group clever photographer academy we're gonna have a lots of fun there talk about pictures throughout the week maybe do even some rating maybe live rating we're gonna upload all the videos there as well and it's gonna be lots of fun so sabine thank you so much send us more pictures in the future and don't worry i haven't forget about your photo i will edit it and post it as soon as i come uh, and as soon as i can this week Moving on the next one, we have a sport photography from Murray. Murray, I feel like I saw a picture from you last week. Let's have a look. Sport, sport, sport. Uh, Murray, 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 Murray. Murray Mc... here, yeah. I thought I saw you and we had this kind of guy on a bike. So this week, uh, no, don't, that's actually a while ago. Let's see if I saw something last week. Sport or travel. That was a travel. And yeah, I was commenting on your panning. And now when we look at your pictures this week, uh, I can see it here again. Obviously the boat going well done. I really like the blur. I like the amount of the blur that there are some details still left. Well done on this one. Where this one is a little bit different. So let's jump straight to it. First impression, love this one. Although uh, I think I'm not sure about the white balance. And another thing, Murray, I see is the sensor dust there. Uh, look, when I jump here and click on this, uh, you cannot see that much on this. Let's say if I lower it, you can see it here, here. Uh, but most likely you can see it on the water. I Let me zoom in a little bit. Can you see it here? So if I click like this, if I make it a little bit smaller and click here, uh, that doesn't really work. Um, so we need to go. Hmm. So in this case, it doesn't work, but there is another one here as well. So I would definitely check your sensor on your camera because this one is really visible. Maybe we would have to go in Photoshop to fix that. Uh, at least like this, just to give you an idea. So first impression, yeah, um, the sensor dust, I think is a shame. I think that takes some points away, but the, 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 the pan is done nicely and there is more sensor dust here. I would maybe crop it a little bit differently, but we can have a look at it during the post-processing. So um, this one I love. This one I'm not so sure. It's a lovely panorama, but I tell you what, there is again, lots of this sensor dust here and here. So definitely you can either try to clean your camera home by yourself or every kind of reasonable photography shop will do it for you. I don't know, like here in UK, I pay 14 pounds. I leave it there for an hour and they clean it for me. And it's magic. It works like a magic. Otherwise it's, it's a uh, lots of work. Let's look if I have the setting here. F9, um, you're getting lots of dust already. If with F9, usually the higher is the F stop, the more noise, uh, uh, the sensor dust comes out. But, um, in your case, uh, definitely maybe something to look at and try to clean it. Um, otherwise it's a lovely panorama and I tell you what, it works together as a story. So I think you start with this, you open the story and then you have a picture like this and maybe another picture. And I think together it works very well. However, I think there could be a little bit more texture and a little, and, it, and I think the white balance again, I'm not sure about. So let's jump to it. Uh, technically this one, super well done. Love the sharpness on the boat. Um, um, the light is right, although it seems a little bit, a little bit overexposed. Let's have a look. Yeah. So you see when I go here inside of the settings and I hit the whites with option or alt, you can see everything what's white, the data are already burned out. So it's overexposed when it's black, it's fine. So basically in these parts you see here, when I hit it, uh, we lost all the details. So just keep an eye on that. Try to, um, keep an eye on the exposure a little bit. Uh, but otherwise, uh, very well done. Moving on this one, um, it's sharp enough. It's a little bit of a shame that the quality is low. So it's 1,600. So next time send us a picture, try to send them in a little bit bigger sites. It will help us to um, uh, judge it a little bit more. But you see how it's really blurry. But uh, it seems to be all nicely captured. There is really nice details in the wave. Actually, I think that works really well. Um, and uh, the time of the day, obviously these things happening during the day, so you can't choose much differently, but there could have been, if you would be like a little bit more texture in the sky with some clouds and so on, maybe a birds, but it doesn't matter. Moving on artistic, um, definitely I would go for different crop on this one. I would go for heavy panoramatic. 
something like this because the boat is definitely our main subject here and we don't really worry although the panning kind of element around it is nice um it doesn't add us anything this is what we focus on and this is what i would crop on um and and uh, yeah it's lovely i think the boat is coming from this side so there is enough space for it uh, and it really works nice detail in the actual splash so well done on that moving on this one huge panorama um yeah uh, no i think it's not about crop um i think let's have a look just with the white balance yeah okay um it's just lots happening there obviously it's kind of sport capture so you can see the boat so it's kind of working um it's just i'm not sure about the white balance it's a little bit it's not the greatest light on the planet and um it's just lots happening but as a together as a set i think it works quite well post processing wise this one let's see black and white and actually black and white doesn't look too bad you know because obviously there is not much happening in the sky anyway it kind of brings something a little bit different with a little bit of contrast it works quite well i would bring the sky down even more you know to something like this because again not much happening and everything is happening here it wouldn't have to be black and white it was just an idea there is a lot of green happening in this picture so i would push definitely the tint to get rid of the green you see can you see the green and water and everything when i push the tint it kind of disappear and help us a little bit so that's helpful as well i think a little bit of a vignette would help us as well to do something like this and work great similarly here i can see that your white balance is going heavily towards the green um, so again i would go with the no, vibrance with the tint to something like this if you're never sure you can always pick up this little eyedropper and maybe go for something white like this and then you can just bring it down to something pleasing for the eye so something like this um, again you could do a little bit of the pa -pa -pa vignette here and yeah lovely uh, you saw what i did with the sensor dust it's a shame because we are obviously losing some of the details here here again it would have to go in a photoshop and we could remove it there so just something to keep an eye on for the future sensor dust or lens dust and keep an eye to make sure that you can remove it but in overall murray thank you so much for sending us your photos it's always a joy to look at them i really like what you're photographing um it's just a few things uh, overall rating today definitely three solid three i think because of the sensor dust and stuff they're not really ready for the portfolio but technically and composition wise well done uh, you're definitely on track and oh, please send us more pictures in the future we can't wait to see them moving on the next photographer john tarp john i also feel like i saw some pictures from you before let's have a look still life john last week we saw the feathers oh yes so let's jump straight into what we have from you here john so macro photography with a lovely lovely flower and then flowers in the studio so uh, before we do that john let me show you and i already probably talk about this with you but it's just because uh you can really make magic with it um my friend joel grimes which is more known for portrait photography he has a class now uh, which is called still life Masterclass. it's 57 dollars no, it's not cheap, but maybe something to look at. And then you can really learn how to set up the lights home in your own studio and create something like this. And I found it really lovely. I think the course is brilliant. Again, just to repeat, I'm not sponsored by him. I don't get any money from the sale. It's just something I think really works and it's nicely done. So if that would be something interesting, you can go for it. But let's talk about first impression. This one I quite like uh although i think it's a bit too cropped i would like a little bit more space around the actual flower but it's nicely done it's a lovely flower i really like the depth of the field with the surrounding well done this one i like even more i think it's a lovely studio shot i am not sure 100 percent about the light which is coming from the top i think it's a little bit harsh but the composition is lovely i think it tells story it's more on an older fashion capture but still it's well done so uh, technically Starting on this one, everything is sharp, including the flower here, which is really now the new trend in macro photography. Your main subject, sharp all the way through. Really important. Lots of people do way too much blur. Your background is just blur enough so we can recognize it. Well done on that as well. 
your main element is contrasted to compared to its background also great the light is nice diffused straight on it has a nice golden hue well done on that plus the capture of the water technically this one is spot on moving on this one uh, um uh, the sharpness we don't have to talk it's sharp all the way through even though there are no details um, it's really nicely done um, exposure is well done but the light i think there is a light definitely coming from the top and it creates lots of these really harsh shadows so either i would try to diffuse it somehow put it further lower the volume of it or see what you could do because i think that takes a little bit away from it otherwise technically well done so i think technically this one a little bit better but not far behind john moving on the artistic feel um more space around the flower would really help um not crazily but just enough to let the flower breathe a little bit i think it would help um I think the message is nice. It's actually a very lovely photo. One of the nicer macro photos I've seen over the last few months. So well done on that. A lovely selection. Again, I really like how you went for the contrast of the flower with the background. I think lately what I also saw quite often is the main subject having similar color to its background. So even though the depth of the field and the separation is done well, it actually um, it actually blend together and it takes away from the actual photo this is well done on this one um, i think the composition is nicely done as i say it's more on a kind of um, these compositions aren't really built like this anymore but it's still nicely done it's nicely crafted it's nicely balanced together it's a lovely story and i really like it post processing wise this one um, let's have a look at the white balance there's something on it i'm not 100 percent sure so if we go into color and look for auto and maybe just like this so there was lots of purple and lots of yellow so this would be me if i would do it uh, this is you before so just a little bit more natural again as you can see by bringing down the temperature we get even more contrast at the background so that would be just me for the post processing i would definitely add a vignette to add more focus on the flower because even the flower is nice it's kind of equally lit and it takes away a little bit of the attention so for example i would definitely uh, do a little bit of a dodge and burn in the center you know to create more and then on these parts maybe not that much but something like this and then maybe add a little bit of the brightness to the parts where you want them to be bright you know something like this and there you hope so so that's what i would do with this one on this one definitely uh, i would have a look if it's all straight because it seems like it's tilting on one side so if i am in the settings and i go to geometry and i look for auto does it help us just a little bit again i would go for vignetting yeah a little bit like this here um, do a little radial from the bottom to bring more attention towards the actual center of the pictures and the sunflowers. And that's it. I mean, there's not much I would add to this one. I think in overall, it's well done. Uh, and thank you so much, John, for sending them to us. I think your overall rating for all both of these pictures is definitely three. I think they are spot on. You spot on and way on track with your photography. I don't know if they are ready to be put on your portfolio yet. Um, I think there's few bits and pieces uh, I would like to see more from you, John, but in overall, thank you so much for sending us your photos. If you want to join us for more photographic discussion throughout the week, make sure you head to our new thing, which is called Clever Photographer Academy. It's a group on Facebook. You just come, register, and uh, we will review pictures during the week, do some live review videos, and have a lot of fun with photos. So moving on, the next photographer, Jack. Jack, I actually saw this picture last week, I feel. Let's have a look. One life no you were part of mix just jack 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 i reviewed this picture last week jack you should go back to last week video and uh, see it and see what i had to say about it stunning capture um although i was commenting on this branch here still very very beautiful oh, well done there i believe i give you three or four star i'm not sure jack check it out uh i will try if you're on youtube i will try to link the link to it um above wherever it's gonna go and you can check it out there but if you have more picture jack send it over i know i saw your website uh, i saw your stunning photos so uh, send them over send more pictures over jack 
just to explain, I know you were asking Pauline about the rules. So our photography review show is always recorded on Monday. So the cutoff date is always the Sunday, the midnight of the Sunday before. <coughs> Sorry. So you basically have the entire Sunday to send us your photos. Uh, and then midnight here on a central European time, we cut it off. And if you send us the pictures, we use them for the next show after. And then let's finish it off with John Lister. John, I also saw pictures from you last week and I remember I loved this one. So let's have a look at what you sent us this week. And let's talk about first impression. First of all, two, loving this one. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful again. I really like how you able to capture the details on the birds uh, with such a sharpness. I want to think what camera are you using? Nikon D7100 and using one to 400 millimeters. 400 millimeters. I'm very impressed. Uh, really, really nice uh, capture. This one, it's nothing to do with the technical point of the picture. It's to do more with the composition. I think for this to work, you would have to be much lower and facing the actual animal because the bird is kind of going, it gets all hidden away. Also, unfortunately for you, the color of the actual animal with the background really makes it melt like a like kind of blend together so it doesn't create that much of a contrast compared to this so that's just the first impression let's talk about technical part of the captures of the pictures so technically um on this one i see uh, this is all sharp and then i see a little bit of a blur on the kind of fur and the forehead so it's a shame that we don't have a detail so i could tell you more about why is it it could also be to do with the compression of the file but it's a high quality so i'm not sure if I'm right, but it seems this part seems to be blurry, which is a little bit of a shame. But uh, the light is right, although there is kind of really dark points here. So that's either a really heavy vignette or it's your camera uh, not... Uh, the post-processing with the camera is not done right. So I think that's a shame. But oh, this is an actual thief. This is a raw file. Let's have a look. So if we jump into optics and enable lens correction, we would need to know what camera was it. Let's have a look if it's the same like here. Nikon. Nikon D700. 1 to 400 millimeters. Let's see. I'm just kind of guessing here. I'm sorry for taking your time. Um, Nikon. 1 to 400. No, I can't see it here. That's a shame. Uh, anyway, never mind. Uh, if you have the details, you can send them over. So there is a heavy vignetting. I'm not sure about the sharpness. The light is a little bit on a green. You see how it kind of bring the green tones. I'm not crazy about the light. While on this one, I think uh, I'm super happy with the sharpness of the bird. There is a lovely blur at the back. Uh, the light is quite nice, diffused. It's not too much on the warm side, not too much on the other. The exposure is done well. This one technically is I think a little bit better done than the other one. From the uh, composition point of view, um, again, this one, I think you would have to be lower and face the actual animal to get a little bit better capture and little composition, or the bird would have to put up his head and look towards you to get a little bit more out of it. On this one, um, composition wise, it's well done, it's well balanced. Could we do a little bit tighter? Uh, crop maybe something like this yes we could it's all about the bird really on this picture we not worry about too much of the blur maybe something like this just to get the most out of it but in overall i really like this one composition wise it's a clear message lovely capture lovely sharpness throughout well done post processing um it's a raw file so if i would have the details i would be able to help to it a little bit um let's see if we can just maybe push it a little bit for you, um, definitely not sure about yet. Yeah, something like this. Um, I wonder black and white. No, and you see, anytime we have this kind, so you see the brown color in the background of the brown. Even black and white doesn't do too much to it because it really blends together. So on this one, uh, post processing white, I think it's super well done. I would add a vignette to bring even more focus on the actual bird. In ideal, ideal world, this branch wouldn't be here, so we could see more of the bird. But I'm not. That crazy about it. John, in this week, if I would judge you just on this picture, I would go for four. But because there is the picture before where I think it needs a little bit more work, we'll give you three stars. 
Um, I think you know what you're doing, you're well on track with stuff, but just uh, either you select the better pictures or keep trying, send them over and we can talk about it and keep learning. Most cases, John, you can also head to our new Clever Photographer Academy group. It's completely for free and it's all about talking throughout the week about photos. Uh, we're going to review photos throughout the week. We're going to do some live reviews. We're going to answer some questions when it comes to photography and just help to each other. So uh, make sure you head there. We can't wait to see you. And that's it for this week. Guys, if you want to join us, make sure that you head to cleverphotographer.com slash review. That's where you can find all the dates and you can find all the links where you can upload your photos. We do mostly this, what you've seen today, but we're also going to do some specials coming in November. We're going to do... Can your picture be in a National Geographic magazine? We're actually going to take a pictures. We're going to put them on the cover and I'm going to tell you yes or no. Can your picture be there? So it's going to be a lot of fun. Guys, make sure you like, subscribe and comment under this photo so we can keep doing this. And thank you very much for joining us. And until next time, keep shooting. <laughs>